Welcome back to The Talking Edge. I'm Josh Kincaid, and this is your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we are live at the World Trade Center in Seattle talking about bud tenders. They're the critical link between bankruptcy and billions. Today, we're here with some uh, fascinating guests. And so we're going to get jumped right into our panelists here. First, we have Alec Langston. He's a bud tender at Dockside Cannabis. Alec has been a cannabis enthusiast for several years and has been bud tending for about three years now. His passion is educating people about cannabis and bud tending, which has been a great outlet for that, being a bud tender. His goal is to help as many people and experience this wonderful plant as possible. His favorite part of the cannabis industry is changing that perception of cannabis skeptics and watching customers benefit from the guidance that's incredibly rewarding. And he's looking forward to developing within this industry and meeting new people along the way. We also have Brian Yeager, CEO of LemonHaze.com. LemonHaze is a cannabis tech platform with a history of presenting industry data and more recently hosting events with a focus on bud tenders, which is providing innovative and relevant education, networking opportunities, and business exchanges along with nationally recognized entertainers who have a prominent voice in the normalization and growth of recreational cannabis industry. Ashley is a bud tender at Green Lady Pot Shop in Olympia. She's a bud tender uh, in Olympia with a medical marijuana certificate. Rebecca Berry is a senior account manager at Work. Work is an all-in-one workforce management solution for highly regulated markets, including the cannabis industry. They've created an intuitive application to manage payroll, HR, timekeeping, and tax compliance with everything you need to streamline operations, reduce labor costs, and minimize regulatory risk. And also, remotely, is Claire Kaufman, Director of Client Services at Brightfield Group. Claire's nationally known CBD and cannabis business and marketing strategist. She currently works as the Director of Client Services at the Brightfield Group, an industry-leading CBD and cannabis market research firm. Claire has worked in the CBD and cannabis space for the past seven years. She's worked in-house for vertically integrated cannabis companies and formerly as a Northwest Regional Director for BDS Analytics. Claire has also recently served on the OLCC, Recreational Marijuana Business Council in Oregon. Her take on the future trends of the cannabis industry and the question facing marketers and entrepreneurs are sought out by national and international media, cannabis industry leaders, and key players in the traditional marketing world. I'd like to thank everybody for being on board and being on the, the Talking Hedge podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And about the World Trade Center, the World Trade Center Tacoma grows trade and investment by providing direct access to the largest business network in the world with 300 offices in 99 countries. The World Trade Center in Tacoma is a loan trade service center for the Pacific Northwest. They have seminars and award ceremonies, conferences that can generate contacts and contracts. Trade research can clarify opportunities and their matchmaking can turn those opportunities into trade. One of the things that I like about the World Trade Center is it gives me peace of mind knowing that I can use international guarantees or bank, uh, bank guarantees uh, as a member. And also the e-commerce export store, they partnered with Alibaba, which is translated into 18 languages and provides an opportunity to sell your product online internationally uh, to hard to reach places like Asia. So being a cannabis business podcast, I wanted to provide a, a, maybe a solution or, or an idea for a solution. Um, with all of the turnover. And so this last question uh, is just one based on my own research. And so there's a lot of ways that we can get bud tenders to stay. One is probably the most obvious here is performance. Setting people up to sell well is probably the biggest win-win in any retail environment. Headsets numbers confirm that. Beyond just creating high performers, treating the ones that you have well is also super important. So if turnover is lowest amongst highest performers, it follows that people who have been around longer tend to be better at their jobs. And by extension, the high rate of early hire turnover isn't terribly surprising either. This might just be that the industry is weeding out those who aren't right for it. So to retain bud tenders, a cannabis retailer can offer competitive pay, healthcare, ongoing education, performance incentives. But the key industry insiders told Marijuana Business Magazine is that to keep bud tenders engaged and make them feel valid, uh, is, is just more than that. And so I did my own research on what uh, is, is the, the best opportunity for uh, the highest sales performers, uh, what, what keeps people engaged, what is the uh, highest amount of morale that you can create. And it really came down to an acronym called Team Icon. And so I just grabbed seven out of like the top 10 things that everybody wanted and it, and it 
made this acronym called Team Icon, and, and Alex started it with trust. So Team Icon stands for to trust your employees or trust your bud tenders, empower your bud tenders, appreciate them, mentor them, involve them, challenge them, and keep them feeling like they're on a mission. So again, Team Icon is this thing where it, whatever you want to do, you want to have the, the best sales performance, the highest morale, the, the cheeks and seats the longest, or the, the best sales group. As long as you have Team Icon from the research I've done, the only thing it doesn't really cover is pay them well and promote them. If they follow Team Icon, they will be paid well, and promotion is, is just a, a title. You can give them whatever title you want. As long as you trust them, empower them, appreciate them, mentor them, and keep them involved, challenged and on a mission team icon might be able to keep your your bud tenders from uh from leaving and bud tenders as we know is the difference between uh bankruptcy and billions so um having said that team icon if if your employer trusted you and, and empowered you appreciated you mentored you and kept you involved challenged and on a mission would that stem that flow of turnover yeah and, and i think we see a lot of companies that are I shouldn't say a lot. Um, <laughs> in the cannabis industry, it is, is still evolving, but we, we see companies that have um, values um, that uh, they have set up or they have a commitment, what they call like a commitment to their employees. Um, it might be up on their break room where it says commitment to you, and it will say, you know, a variation of, of some of those um, some of those components that you just mentioned. So, um, it is great in theory. Um, it has to be something that is, um, that is, you know, you see an execution and that you stick to every single day. Um, and something that you, um, refer back to every single day that, okay, this, you know, this is one of our, um, tenants is one of the other things that, um, we'll see them called. Uh, but, what we unfortunately more often than not see is a lot of companies will, you know, put it up on the break room wall and say, you know, this is our commitment to you. And then um, there's no execution on it. It's just a poster for PR purposes. It's on a wall. So, as, you know, as long as companies have the bandwidth and have the drive to ensure execution of um, commitments they're making to their employees like that, then... You know, it's great, um, but they need to be ready to execute. And Brian, what's, uh, what's your opinion in terms of if a company were to implement Team Icon, is that going to help the industry with turnover? 100%. I, 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 and, and uh, I've been fortunate uh, to get to know a lot of budgeters and get to, not, get to know a lot of them very well um, and, ha and interact with them quite a bit. And one of the biggest... Um, complaints that I get from budget is they just don't feel like they're appreciated. They don't feel like they're appreciated by their by their employers. And again, as a business owner myself, I, sometimes I kind of say, I get frustrated with people too sometimes, but the by but the the recognition and then like Ashley said, the pay and the promotion will come with it as long as you feel important. But you've got to make and this is for millions and millions too, like Ashley said. You've got to make your employees feel like you want them there, like they are important to you. And that they are, because they are the lifeblood of your business. I mean, and, and you have a business, I have a business, but neither of us have a retailer. But as a, as a, as a retailer, even as an industry as a whole, the butt tender is the lifeblood of our, of our industry. Because there's no other way to tell people about your product. And um, so I get it. As a business owner, sometimes there's, there's frustration, but you cannot let that, um, that, alter what's most important is that your employees feel like and understand this is true you have no business without your employees and if your employees are unhappy they're not going to perform for you as well and you know we've all been there where you know what what can i pay what can i afford to pay well, you know, there's there's so many things that a lot of employees don't understand you need to pay the taxes you've got overhead you've got all these other things but but making them feel important that's not hard that's not hard. Um, and the rest hopefully will come come later. Ashley, what's your opinion? I feel like, yeah, I mean, in any industry, not just cannabis, but 
any job I've ever had that would be for the uppers and management to really focus on those things. The other two, um, pay and promotions will come hand in hand because they'll see what you're doing and they will trust you to do that job to its full extent. Exactly. And Alec, I met you at Dockside because you had a recycling program. So you saw a need, you went out and you uh, you kind of designed that own company. So give us a brief yeah. outline of that. So so Panacycle is, first of all, not my company. It's uh, my friend, Eric Klaus, who's the owner of Panacycle. Uh, started it when I just got to work at Origins with him. Uh, and it's a recycling program for canvas packaging specifically. And that's a big need in our industry because I mean, we have we have to have packaging. We have to have sealed stuff packaging when it gets in the store. And what do we do with it? It's the question. Um, so in a cycle currently we have about a dozen different drop points where you can recycle uh, glass specifically, uh, plastic kind of next step, right? Um, but it's it's something that the industry desperately needs, desperately needs because um, you know, as a new industry, there's a lot of skeptical people about cannabis specifically, and we want to have a good, uh, you know, face to the public. We want to have a good relationship with the greater, the greater society, as you will. Um, and I think that cannabis cycle is a really important part of the is going to make a big difference uh, in the future. I just Yes, 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 exactly. Um, and the, the big hurdle that we're dealing with right now is that we can't have these things, these return bins, inside a 502 dispensary. Mm -hmm. It's open packaging, even though there's not something in it. Uh, open container like alcohol. Yes, exactly. So, uh, when it's on, even if it's in even if it's empty. So the way, so our first thing is that board will be how we get around it. If there's an emergency, it's not five minutes. Yeah, that's right. I think Green Lady is going to sign in on that. But I have seen it at Tony's Variety Smoke Shop right down the road. So I even think the smoke shops, if they don't want to have open packages in there either, because LCD does visit them too for CBD checks and whatnot, then that, I mean, or if LCD decides that would be the worst thing for, for the recycle, the piano cycle right now. And with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is the Talking Hedge. I want to thank all my guests for being here with the Bud Tenor panel. That's Alec Langston, he's a Bud Tenor at Dockside Cannabis. Uh, Brian Yeager, right here, CEO of LemonHaze.com. We have Ashley Herkett, Bud Tenor at Green Lady Pot Shop in Olympia. On the line with us is Rebecca Berry, Senior Account Manager at Work. And also on the line with us is Claire Kaufman, Director of Client Services at Brightfield Group. Previously recorded is Tom Geiger, Communications Director of the Union in Seattle, UFCW 21. Also, Kara Bradford and David Moret, co-founders at Viridian Staffing. And Zara Cole and Tyler Nestorenko of Bud Tender's Ball. But don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out. <laughs>